If you always were eyeing at x4 but never took the plunge, you came to the right place. This also applies if you don't really know what x4 foundations is. The x series somewhat flies below the radar, which is weird, because there's nothing like it out there. Sure, there's Star Citizen and Elite and also stuff like Everspace and Chorus. X4 though is alone in its niche and now after years of improvement, it went from decent to very, very good. Let me give you an overview of what X4 is, how the game developed over time and the game's current state. Stay with me until the end and you'll get the chance to win a free copy of the game, but now let's dive right in. X4 improved tremendously over the years. Many of the issues I addressed in my initial review from 2019 have been fixed or at least improved to a bearable level. Some still persist, but well, that's part of the ambitious nature of the X-Series, I suppose. Egosoft also added a ton of new content through several DLCs. The upcoming one is something special we've been waiting for a long while. But let's start at the core. X4 mainly is an enormous Xenon invasion defense simulator. The game simulates a galactic region consisting of numerous sectors and subsectors. You travel between them by using jump gates and accelerators. There also are interstellar highways to speed up your travels between some of these installations. This network of interconnected star systems, asteroid fields, nebulae and debris fields is populated by countless ships and stations belonging to different factions. Each and every one of them is simulated independently. Your computer is literally running a little universe and throws you and your small starter ship right in the middle of it. Every ship you meet has a captain and a crew. All the factions interact with each other. They trade, form alliances and clash in armed conflict. But there's one common enemy. The aforementioned Xenon are a bunch of self-replicating rogue AIs, once used as terraformers by us, the Terrans. That's why everyone in the X-Universe is mad at them, by the way. These terraformers got out of control long ago and evolved into the Xenon. Just like the mold under your kitchen sink will do if you ignore it any longer. They can't be reasoned with and all they do is to convert every planet they can find into a gigantic robot colony. Unfortunately, with little regard for the needs of the original inhabitants. Which obviously sucks if you're organic and alive and not so much afterwards. This brings me to the primary factions you encounter besides the Xenon. The Argon Federation is a human-led faction and descendants of stranded Terran colonists. They are known for their advanced technology and strong military, a bit like the good old US of A. The Paranid Empire is a religious faction that is ruled by a powerful theocracy. They are notorious for their arrogance and intolerance of other beliefs. The Teladi Company are reptilian aliens known for their shrewd business practices. They are biologically immortal, but carry out a suicide ritual after they reach 400 years of age. The Kag are insectoid aliens and form another hostile faction besides the Xenon. They are not overly technologically advanced, but still pose a threat due to their sheer numbers and aggressive behavior. Sounds strikingly similar to mobile game companies. Two more factions were added via DLC. The Split Dynasty are roughly humanoid aliens who are known for their aggression and cunning. Organized as a strict patriarchy, they often stir up trouble. And last but not least, the Terran Protectorate. It boasts the most advanced ships and equipment. They also are zealous in their mission to protect the Sol system from the Xenon. Even as a Terran citizen, you're not born with the right to merely approach Earth. You have to earn it. On top of that, these factions split up into smaller communities and splinter groups, each with their own agenda and personality. In the end, this eccentric bunch of different actors makes sure each new game feels different. Also, every time you generate a new universe, a unique Zed is generated. One time the Xenon might go completely rampant from the beginning and everyone else immediately has to fight for their lives. Another Zed could generate rather slowly expanding Xenon, but a Mike Tyson-style aggressive Paranid Empire, for example. They will stomp their neighbors within the first 20 hours of the game. With the territory gained, their economy flourishes. Then they start to build a fleet of idiotic proportions to take over the galaxy and subdue all the infidels. You could now choose to intervene early and try to collapse their economy by destroying key factories. Or you can't intervene at all, because you're still just a little fish in a big pond without the resources to do so. 
Or you might try to spark a conflict with another strong faction before the Paranid fleet gets too strong. Then you could sell resources to both sides of the conflict. With the money earned, you might buy your own sector where you build a self-sustaining mega factory including a shipyard to pump out your own carrier fleet. Or since X4 is a sandbox, you do something completely different. Like playing some of the storylines. Each DLC comes with a corresponding optional plot. The one you should always play is the one about the player HQ. It's short, nicely staged, involves a Boron, more on that later, and earns you a space station to use as your headquarters. Most plots have a branching storyline, including for example a civil war, covert ops in Earth's orbit, a split revolution and a prison break. One of my main issues with the vanilla game was the barebones story, which made it hard for new players to get into the game and gain a feel for the factions and how the galaxy functions. Egosoft really delivered with the DLCs though. I guess there's at least 20 to 30 hours of story content available now if you're new to the game. This estimate is likely way too low because I already know how to quickly complete all the plots. Maybe someone else can supply a more accurate value in the comments. Also, some storylines are linked to certain game starts, which adds some replay value. When it comes to space combat, X4 gives you all the options. You can choose to direct your fleets on the map and let your hired pilots do the heavy lifting. Or you command the battle yourself from the bridge of a destroyer maybe even from a battleship or carrier. Or you do both and sometimes teleport into the cockpit of a little fighter or a corvette to help with a specific task during an assault. While other games limit you to only fly a single ship by yourself or feature tactical gameplay without any means to directly control vehicles, X4 just tries to do everything and sometimes fails miserably. But most of the times it works and the result is stellar. The longer a game lasts, the more chaos erupts. You know, entropy and isolated systems. And the bigger the battles become. The ships, of course, are customizable and there are faction-specific weapons and other equipment. There are tons of different ways to play this game. Some people try to defeat the Xenon. Others like the early and mid-game most and start a new game with a different seed over and over again. Some love building custom space stations, which results in beautiful designs or giant mega factories. Then there are people who thrive in doing missions for different factions and just watch how the Xenon invasion unfolds as a bystander. Other folks are just there for the economic aspect. You can play the game almost completely from the map. There's one guy who sank hundreds of hours into X4 to find the perfect game start from an economic perspective. And some people just want to take over the whole map and watch the world burn. Because X4 tries to do everything at once, there are some limitations. You can't land on planets, for example. But you can terraform them as an endgame activity. You can walk around on stations though. And you can dock smaller ships on bigger ships. You can also fly around wearing just your spacesuit. Other games do simulate space combat from a cockpit perspective better but they lack the tactical map and the real-time strategy component. Some real-time strategy games have better wayfinding, but you can't pilot every ship you own, from fighter to carrier. Especially X4's wayfinding was atrocious at release, but got improved over the years. It's okay-ish right now and the upcoming 6.0 update promises to add some more tweaks to it, as well as to the battle AI. Update 2.0 added player-owned shipyards and wharfs, 2.5 overhauled the economic system and added the blacklisting of sectors, so your ships don't accidentally fly into hostile space and get lost anymore. That really was a problem at launch, especially for mining fleets. 3.0 added the split and improved the graphics engine. 4.0 added the Terrans, improved fleet control and introduced a message system for important communication with NPCs. 5.0 came with scrap recycling, FSR upsampling and tons of other stuff. The game still is a resource hog and will especially be taxing on your CPU, but its performance now is much better than at launch. The graphics look dated, especially the animations of NPCs, but the next DLC will also update the graphics engine again, so a little bit of improvement can be expected. Speaking of the next DLC, it will finally add the Boron. 
aquatic, peaceful creatures, which always were my favorite faction of the whole series. Their ships and stations look absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at that. That's just f***ing beautiful. So, this video has been going on for far too long now and I only scrapped the surface of what X4 has to offer. It's not a game for everyone, that's for sure. The interface, although improved, still isn't anything I'd call good, which makes managing your fleets way harder than it should be, and the visual quality is not quite AAA level. But X4 shines in other aspects, especially now with all the added content. This space sandbox created its own niche decades ago and is especially worth playing if you haven't played the earlier X games. If you want to give it a try, I suggest you don't play the basic game. Pick up at least the collector's edition with access to the first two DLCs. Particularly Cradle of Humanity adds a lot to the game and the Terran game start is one of the best in my opinion, if not the best. It's on sale frequently too, so you're not going to break the bank if you're a bit patient. If you would like to get a chance to win an X4 key, just join the giveaway via the Gleam link in the description below. You only need to provide your email so I can contact you if you should win. No need to subscribe to my channel or anything else. I'm just giving away a key to make a random person watching my stuff happy, subscribed or not. You also won't be added to a stupid mailing list or anything else. Well, thanks for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, you might also like some of the other stuff I made, perhaps this video essay about why you should play Subnautica or the random thing below it. See you next time and fly safe.